Okay, and we are live. Awesome. Hey, welcome everyone to our Facebook Live. Today we're going to be talking about different tips and questions that you may have about how to elevate your brand message. So, um, this is Dani Vieira. I'm the small business education manager for uh, Baker Ripley. And our Entrepreneur Connection program helps small business owners with resources, education, and connections to capital. So please follow us on Facebook. Go sign up on your uh, newsletter because we have a lot of events, a lot of workshops, Facebook Live like this. We have classes and we even have pitch competitions where you can earn uh, some uh, win some um, capital for your business. So please go ahead and follow us and stay tuned because we are always sharing resources. We're always sharing all the programs and other organizations that are supporting small business in the Houston area. So today we have our special guest, Gavi. Gabby Rendon. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm going to read you a little bit about her uh, bio and she will tell us more because yeah. I know she is awesome and she's the Thank pro. You. So Gabby Rendon, originally from Monterrey, Nuevo León, has over 15 years of entrepreneurial experience. She co-founded a digital marketing agency, agency specializing in SEO e-commerce and omni-channel marketing solutions for small business and women entrepreneurs. As a certified mentor for SCORE, yes. so we are partnering up with SCORE today, mm -hmm. and active participant in Houston's entrepreneurial community, Gabby supports aspiring business owners, and she is also the producer and host of the Content with a Purpose podcast. You go and look for it. It's awesome. Sharing marketing strategies and interviewing entrepreneurial moms. Oh, yeah. Gabby is the author of the Mom Entrepreneur Path, offering guidance on balancing family and business success. Her and her future plans include launching an online academy to empower more um, women entrepreneurs. Oh my God. <gasps> I'll be your first student. Okay, you got it. First scholarship going out. Awesome. Okay, Gabby, just tell us a little bit more about you so our uh, community can learn what you do and what's your expertise and what's your experience. Okay, well, I'm so thrilled and happy to be here with you and the invitation is just awesome. Okay, so yes, 15 years sounds like a lot and they, they are, but it's just like, be, it, felt, it felt like yesterday to tell the truth that I started my first business. Many oh, wow. years ago. However, uh, right now in Houston, I am a SCORE mentor, which means that I SCORE is a nonprofit that helps small businesses, in case so many doesn't know, uh, uh, help small businesses with mentorship on beginning to end, startup, and all the things you need. So once you are with us as a SCORE mentor, you don't get rid of us. The same with Baker Ripley. You, want, you stay with us, you stay with us, and we help you all the way through. So, and we work together, we like, work like, because we don't know it all, and we know SCORE has, like, experts in different industries, mm -hmm. so when we have a client that we know that we need to be go deeper uh, on their industry, so we reach out to you guys, uh, and, of course, we, we, we work together with the SCORE mentors. Yes, we love this partnership, our workshops together, and the um, competitions, the pitch competitions are amazing. So if you haven't done any classes or any pitch competitions with Baker Ripley, you should register, they're amazing, and you not only learn, but you create a network with everybody else, which is what small business is all about, all creating about. network, networking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, what do I do? I help basically my clients to transform those likes into real clients because you cannot live from likes. You actually need to sell things. I help them found to, to get found online. So your website traffic, I create lead generation and of course search engine optimization. And that is basically what I help my clients with to get found online. 
Okay. That's it. So you work with a lot of small business owners. I basically work with uh, women-owned businesses. That's what I like. I like to support my my female friends and female uh, entrepreneurs, and um, I help them basically to transform those likes in Instagram and Facebook and to actually make them sales. So that's basically what I. And do. that's what everyone wants. Because yeah. like sometimes we're all so deep into creating the content but at the end of the day we don't see those sales the results. Yeah. yes and that's what we're all working for yeah. oh, so something. this is very important today we are going to go back a little bit okay and see what we have to do mm -hmm. to have a clear message to know who okay. we're talking to and uh to build a structure um, a structured message for your brand so you can clearly convert those likes, those shares, those uh, followers into real sales. But, um, so if we go back, like I was saying, uh, it all starts from your brand. So we know you are experts on your services. You're, all, you're always experts on your products and what you do, but the brand is a whole different word um that it's your face out there mm -hmm. uh but it's also how you're talking to your target audience so uh first of all uh we were talking earlier before and you were telling me that sometimes the small business owners get a little confused uh between the brand message mm -hmm. and the brand marketing yeah so can we uh, we're going to start, start with that. that. Okay, so um, basically what I was telling uh, Danny is that when you are a small business, usually you focus on your logo, your tagline, and the colors, which is part of your brand. However, that is not what is going to attract the sale of your target audience and actually convince them to buy your product. So what you are, you have to start focusing on is to uh, create a message that reflects your brand. And that message is the one that is going to be transformed into marketing a strategy so you can attract those ideal clients and that target uh, and, and convert them into a sale. And how do you do that? Well, I knew that was going to be your question. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go into that question, uh, please, if you are watching us right now, mm -hmm. share here in the comments what's your industry, what's your business about. So we can use your business as examples. And of course, if you have questions, you can uh, put them in here. Y si lo estás viendo en es, en, y hablas español, no sabes cómo hacer las preguntas en inglés, también hablamos español y también nos puedes dejar las preguntas acá y eh, podemos ayudarte a responder con eso. So now, let's go back to how you build it. Okay, so we're going to have... Um what I like to do. It's a three-step process, right? The first one is you're going to start with a basic on your, uh, what is your business about, your mission and vision. And this is one of the hardest part to do because we love our business. We are so proud of our business. And we usually have this, um, trabajo, how you say it in English, that you are literally inside of your business and you, you can't see the flaws, but if you so yeah, very like and, laser focused yes. okay so but if you go outside your bubble and you ask your customers um, which is the first tip I want to share with you um, go outside uh, and ask your cl clients if you were going to refer me what how you would refer me so what are the services you will recommend me for and do this like three four five times and you will see a pattern of maybe you are the best as this getting the best leads. I don't know how you do it. In my case, I said, Gabby, I really don't know how you do it, but I get the right clients all the time. The ones that are ready to get my, uh, my services. Okay. And that is my main, um, it's not a tagline, but that is my main uh, differentiation. That other will say, you are always have the best hamburgers in Galer, for example. And that's the way to go. Maybe you have, maybe you are an orthodontist. Is you are the best that kids really love you. They are not scared of you. And that is a, a is a unique value proposition. Those surveys, those questions are they going to be the foundation of your branding. The second part of this uh, uh, is, we're all here to make money, right? However, 
What are your values? What are your values as a brand? What are you holding on? What is, what do you see your business in five years, mm -hmm. right? And that that part of the values, the mission that you want to achieve, is part of that branding. Is that part of who do you want to become as a brand that will always be connected to your customers and they will always be, and because they're connected, they're going to be loyal to you. So, so that's kind of your purpose. Your purpose, your mission, and your vision. That mm -hmm. will be the three things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we sometimes like we get so um, busy getting the product out, uh, printing our material, like marketing mm -hmm. materials and all that, that we don't stop and think about this. And this is just the baseline of this everything baseline. on your mm -hmm. brand. Mm -hmm. So we sometimes we skip this part, we skip this this step and we go straight on sale on sales on trying to sell and that's why you don't get those sales so you that's why i was telling you that we have to, to go, go back, back. back to the basics. <laughs> yes let's go back to the basics and see like why are you here why is that you uh, are delivering this service for and what is the change that you want to achieve in your community uh what what is the part like what is the deep reason what you are doing what you're doing and that's gonna be like the heart in the dna of your of your brand absolutely and w once you know wh what is your heart what, what you're putting out there so your clients can be connected to you or, or your mission and vision one of the things that you should be starting to look and everybody's missed this one is the research everybody's missing the research but it's so annoying to go and ask and and basically it's asking outside of your comfort zone to say hey would you like this product would you like this uh, um, service would you be able to buy I don't know for example this lead generation how much would you pay for it uh, would you like a, a service with these characteristics we assume as a business owner that people actually want something because it is our idea and we forget basic the basic question what is the problem that am i solving if i don't know what if there's a problem out there and if i don't know how to solve it then my client will not even know that they have a problem i know mm -hmm. but they don't so mm -hmm. the moment that you know like oh there's a problem they're having this problem and i can solve it and put it into my uh, brand message, mm -hmm. I can start marketing and use it, use it for marketing. And so go outside, research, ask questions, and then come back and say, okay, now they know my uh, unique value proposition, but they, 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 they are telling me I'm very good at this. Second, they have this problem, for example, um, QuickBooks, let's look at Quick, QuickBooks. Everybody, a small business is basically tax season. We have a bucket with a lot of receipts. We have a bucket with a lot of things that we just put inside. We hate doing numbers. We hate tracking the money. We hate, we hate all that, mm -hmm. but it is needed. And they saw that problem and they created a uh, scan and- Like an all-in-one. All-in-one. You scan it, you put it, it is uh, seamless and they, they take away that uh, part of, um, that I really don't like to do, but it's needed. And just take away my problem, solve it, and I'll figure it out. Yeah. And that's what you have to do when you're creating your brand. You have to give your customer the solution of that problem that they're looking for in a very clear way. Like, like basically with the context too. Mm -hmm. Like not, not just like, okay, I'm gonna sell this phone because yes. you need a phone. Why do I need a phone? Like maybe I need to stay in touch with my family. Maybe I need it uh, to communicate with my clients. So just to start from the needs and yes. in the problem that you're gonna solve, and then you give them the solution. But this is very important in the communication because if we go straight to the solution, they'll be lost. Absolutely. For example, there are many um, uh, clients that they don't use an iPhone. They don't care about the 75 cameras that we have. They just need a phone. <laughs> They don't need a maxi computer, they just want a phone. So they really just need a phone and they go with any other brand that is not Apple. Mm -hmm. In contrary to uh, clients that we are more into content creator, oh, we love to watch movies, or oh, we love to have pictures. We mm -hmm. need, we, we actually it's a need for us. It's not that it's, our life will be doomed without it. Mm -hmm. So you actually have to look into that part of what is the problem that I'm solving and that is how you're going to connect 
faster to your uh, audience and also you're going to be connect creating that brand message in a way that they can understand what that you're solving clear mm -hmm. words mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because like and, and and you can tell from from for example with Apple, like they're not going to advertise it as a a device that you can make calls. No. Because that's not that's not what that's they're what focused they on. No. They're gonna tell you the features. They're gonna tell you what mm -hmm. you can do. They're gonna tell you, okay, you can do this. You can solve this. You can make this easier. And that's what we want to do with our products and our services too. Exactly. You are not going to um, advertise the obvious. Okay, because okay. everybody is going to go for a phone. What you're going to do is to absolutely, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record today. You have to look and focus on the problem and you have to go and look and how are you going to pro solve that problem that no one, no one else is going to do except mm -hmm. you. That, mm -hmm. that is the best thing I can. So in right now there's a word in, or a concept that we hear everywhere uh, and it's storytelling. Okay. So how can small business type the problem solving, like the problem that they're solving, the solution that they're bringing to storytelling? How can you type those up? Okay, back in the days, we very, very like very <laughs> long, many eons ago, we have the marketing that it was a fear of missing out. You're mm -hmm. actually, if you don't get the discount right now, you're doomed. If you don't get this, you're doomed. If you're not going to buy right now, you're doomed, that's one. Second is you, the, the other type of marketing was discount, 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 discount. And it was price-based. Mm -hmm. So either you tell your customer, says yes, okay, I'm exhausted to listening to you, just give me that thing, I'm done. Or they close the, the door in your face and they don't hear, and you don't hear back from them ever. So when you are doing storytelling, you are appealing to their emotions and literally you are going to go into the psychology of your customer. And uh, it is innovative, yes, but it has been for a few years already. Mm -hmm. And um, what are you going to do is to tap into that psychology, into those emotions, and you're going to say, yes, I get you. I understand exactly that it's three o'clock in the morning, it's, um, it's tax time, and you have a pocket of things that you need to sort out. Mm -hmm. And you forgot what that receipt at Starbucks was about. And you have no idea, but you remember that it was with someone and you're about to really not to, to put it in, you're giving up, you're about to say, I'm done. I'm, I'm, what, what did I get into this small business owner? I really don't want to do this, okay? So there comes QuickBook and say, hey, I have an app. And I know that it's three o'clock in the morning, but if you start just taking pictures with this, it is so easy. And that three o'clock in the morning is going to be three o'clock in the afternoon next time that you're going to do it. And in less than five minutes, you're going to be um, finishing with your taxes and you're going to have the entire day focus on what you're supposed to be doing, which is your business and not spending five hours doing uh, accounting. You don't even gonna have a bucket of receipts. You're not even going to have a bucket of receipts, right? Not anymore, <laughs> okay? So you appeal to those emotions, that's one example. Another mm -hmm. example would be, for example, um, let's go with exercise. I hate exercising, okay? I don't like exercising. <laughs> but I know it's healthy, I know I have to do it. So I have to go and get something that is on my phone that reminds me that I have to do something because I know I have to. So even though I don't like it, the, the app tells me, hey, you have five minutes. I know it's difficult, but come on, let's do this. And they're like, okay, I'll do it. And they didn't play my favorite song to do five minutes exercise. So I really like it. Uh -huh. But it appeals to my emotion, like, yeah, I know you don't like it, I know it's tough, I know you don't have time because you're a mom, uh, you're carpool all the time, but you have five minutes. So, chill out, five minutes, you can do it. Get going. Let's go, let's do it. <laughs> and then those five minutes, just, no, I'm not there yet, but at least I'm doing 10 minutes now. So oh, I'm getting there. It's a there. good start point. It's a good start point. So what, I'm, what the storytelling is about connecting with your audience, on an emotional and a psychological level. 
meaning that you have to know them and that's why they create the so-called avatars mm -hmm. the profiling right talking about the avatars mm -hmm. yeah we were talking about, we're talking about avatars about the avatar. here. they, <laughs> they spell my name and they put like the navi people so i was now an avatar <laughs> talking about avatars those profiles that you are actually selling them something mm -hmm. because you know them so well you know the problem so well that all the words that you're going to be using are words that they use that is one of the mistakes that our small business um, owners have, basically. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a, a, a message, a post, a, a campaign, or even naming your product, they, they take out the dictionary and they look for the most uh, embellished word that there is, and they put it over there. And then you're like, what does that I mean? Even I don't even know what is mm. going on. Yeah, but it's catchy. It sounds nice. It rhymes. Yeah, but not because it rhymes. It's actually knowing what on earth am I selling. Or the other one. You put the word at the message, which is very uh, important. And then you put a visual, the, 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 the display, uh, the, mm -hmm. the post. And it has nothing, nothing to do to with do. it. Have nothing to do with it, but it's so yeah. cool because I think no, it does, has nothing to do. No. You can either sell the product or you appeal to the emotion of what you're selling. Maybe it's freedom, maybe it's design, maybe it's elegance, maybe it's something that your audience is going to get with your service or product, and that is the end goal. And because you're doing that, they're going to be so happy that they found you. And yes, say yes, that's exactly you're in my mind. That's exactly what I want, and that's how I want it. I look. For it, I would. That's the uh, price point. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's exactly what I want. I didn't okay. even know it, but I want it right now. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's exactly how I, I had it. So <clears throat> now that we that we're talking to uh, going into those details, mm -hmm. uh, there's also two concepts that usually people like uh, have a misconception of what they mean, and it's like how to uh, differentiate. Uh, your features and your benefits and how these can work not uh, like on in pro of your brand message okay the features are the traits or the characteristics or the description of your product and service basically what it is mm -hmm. uh, it's a square it's light it weights this amount that has seven colors it has a, I'm talking about the phone um, it has uh, three cameras it has this capacity those are features and simple those are facts the benefits it's according to each one of the avatars and each one of the customers that you're going to sell it to you have to describe those benefits because as we said this phone is not the same for a content creator or for of or for example a teenager or than a mom that has mm -hmm. nothing to do with it both of them might be using the, the YouTube and the streaming services but for very different reasons. I watch it in order to do my cooking show so I can actually do something. My kids do it to actually watch all their anime series and their gamers. Mm -hmm. It's completely different. So the, the bandwidth, for example, in my case, is minimal compared to them. So mm -hmm. I don't care about the gigas that I'm going to use, yeah. but for them, yes. So there, there will be two different benefits. Same features, but there are different benefits. Oh, okay. So that's how it's mm -hmm. going to be. You have to um, customize your benefits according to, to your audience, avatars. To your to avatars. Your audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, uh, that's very interesting. Because like sometimes we we have this like at the top mm -hmm. of our mind, but yes. we never think about like okay for a mom. I have the same product, but these are the benefits that can uh, get you. But yes. maybe for a student, those are other benefits that mm -hmm. I can give you with the same product. And that's how uh, segmentation works, basically. Absolutely. So knowing who are we talking to, the way that they like to be approached, mm -hmm. and, and also the, the language that they, that they like, that, that we were talking about. Yes. And, and what, are, what are the reasons why they might like or buy your product? And those are things that you can, those are messages that you can use to promote and to, and to put into your content and in your visuals and your uh, marketing uh, materials, right? Absolutely. So every, every benefit to each one of your audience or 
ideal clients, as I also like to call them, are um, you're going to use words that you can repurpose for all your campaign. So every time that you're going to create a post, an, uh, an article, a, a flyer, an ad, you're going to be using those and your ideal client is going to find you because they're going to connect with you. They're going to mm -hmm. say, yeah, that's exactly what I needed. I, I want a phone that is this amount. Or for example, I want to, in my case, in my case, for example, I want to uh, learn how to create these Facebook ads. I don't want to create huge campaigns. I just want to, to do this and I want to get clients. Mm -hmm. How can I do it without being a marketer? Well, I can teach you how. So mm -hmm. very simple. Or for example, uh, moms who are carpooling all day long and they, uh, they need time management. They don't going to get an Asana or a Trello or, or any of those yeah, time management. Those like project that's management. super mm -hmm. huge. I just want a calendar need that something can easier and quick and, and quick that I can get all my school calendars on. So that that's that's easy. So you mm -hmm. have to go and, and customize to each one of your avatars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, do we have someone have somebody shared with us their uh, industry or business? Okay. PR. Whoa, nice. nice. And then you have Alianco Bakery. Oh, bakery. Oh, bakery. oh, I love bakeries. Okay, so we have PR that it's like an upper level because mm -hmm. like they, on PR, like uh, I will say I'm not an expert on PR, but mm -hmm. my reading of the situation is like you may, you might have to think in two different scenarios because mm -hmm. like you're looking into the media and who will be interested in promoting different messages and also looking to the brands and in 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 the companies that you would like to help uh, promote. You might have. Yeah, you can you can think about how are you going to. Um, reach out to other brands and reach out to other companies that can be a great fit to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. So can both of you can benefit and you can get a, a piece of the market uh, market share. Mm -hmm. So you want, there are complementary brands, for example, you were talking about bakery, uh, I heard bakery, bakery yes. right? For example, you can have a bakery and you have a, um, for example, a coffee shop, both of them can do uh, marketing together and in public relations, the three of them can actually get together so mm -hmm. they can have a great campaign saying this is bakery, this is coffee, and the public relations can say, well, let's going to showcase. And in that regional area, for example, let's say uh, in downtown, in the Heights, basically, you can position that bakery and that coffee shop with a great campaign saying we are uh, the coffee shops and the uh, mm -hmm. bakers of the Heights. And that's how you create community and you create presence and. and later on everybody in the heights are going to say oh we just want, want to go over there because they're amazing yeah and and when talking about collaboration that it's like i, I think it's a really powerful tool that mm -hmm. we can use as small business owners because like before people used to think about collaboration like no they're gonna steal my ideas they're gonna uh do what i'm doing they're my my competition mm -hmm. no like we might be sharing the same audience but you have a different service, I have a different service or a product, and yeah. why don't like join efforts mm -hmm. and get there um, instead of doing it by ourselves? Absolutely. For example, Bakery Ripley and, and, and Score, we both share us the same audience. We are exactly, uh, we, our, our audience are due, the small businesses, and we collaborate a lot. Why? Because two heads are usually better than one, mm -hmm. and there are services that we as Score, we don't provide but you do, mm -hmm. and that's how together we can provide a better service and, and solve a problem that you small businesses have that otherwise we couldn't serve you, we couldn't give you that answer that you're looking for, and you will go someone else. So it's better for us to uh, get together and collaborate mm -hmm. and solve the problem so you can come with us, and then you choose, hey, I need workshops, I need education, I need actually all this training, then you go with the bakery, really. and then say, no, you know something, I really want this specific subject matter expert, and then and then a mentor, then I stay with SCORE. Mm -hmm. And then we get together and we do this amazing thing, and then you stay with us even more. Yeah. So that's how collaboration works. Exactly. We, we are eight billion people in this planet. We are here to support each other, and we're here to, to share many things as a business owner. 
you grow a lot when you collaborate mm -hmm. and you create networks and uh, networking that is in, your, uh, in, in the Spanish or redes sociales you network with other people why because the more you collaborate the more you grow as a business also. sort of yeah I totally agree so um, talking about collaboration mm -hmm. and the fear of people like to get into the competition and like there is a lot of competition for for uh, so many industries so how can they uh, like kind of repurpose their their brand message to stand out uh, with all the competition mm -hmm. that they have okay you're not going to like the, the idea it's called by authority by having a clear message that it is so clear even a two-year-old can understand what you're selling it has to be uh, bulletproof like the science that if you are selling an iPhone the your audience need to know that is a phone that has these basic features that will provide this benefit mm -hmm. so basically the what we say is what do you do to who are you selling it and why do they have to buy from you can we build a, like a Quick example, for example, with the bakery. Like, okay. how can we build like their unique purpose, uh, value proposition and like the message that they need to to com uh, compel to okay. uh, share their brand? So I'm going to think that this baker, uh, the bakery has uh, gluten-free products. So I will say, discover gluten-free cupcakes that do not bloat your guts in the heights so that is that mm -hmm. is exactly what am I doing my value proposition is what gluten-free cupcakes and how they're not going to blow your guts and then mm -hmm. why or, or who or where is in the heights okay mm -hmm. okay 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 interesting okay and um, so we were talking earlier about consistency mm -hmm. and sometimes um, there's a misconception also with consistency because okay. uh, a small business owner sometimes think okay I have to post every day and I have to something something I need to find something to post today because yes. I need to to do it and and that leads into um, not having the clear mm -hmm. message yes and also you mentioned the social the social media social media exhaustion it, oh, there you go that's yes, why I, 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 yes. I call it social media exhaustion. Why? Because you get tired of, you have to post, you have to create content in the and after two months that you don't see results because you post, 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 post and say, nobody is going to like my stuff. Why am I doing this? Uh, you just give up and you just don't do it. And it feels bad. You're like, oh my God, I don't grow. I don't do anything. I. It's just like, why am I doing all this effort, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you have a clear message or your, value, your unique value proposition, uh, your benefits and the problem that you're solving, everything is so easy to post. Why? Because you're going to choose this as a strategy. So if you are multitasking, you're not paying attention to what you're doing because you're driving, come back to us because this is uh, something that I really like to share is um, choose three products. Okay, start with three products. And for example, in the, for the bakery, you start with gluten-free. And then what are the benefits of having gluten-free uh, cupcakes? Mm -hmm. And you create posts not only about uh, gluten-free cakes and they are beautiful, but also about, hey, did you know? Or uh, this, uh, the flavor of the week, or the um, recipes that you can do also at home with all the gluten-free because your audience also, if they are gluten-free and they love cakes, they might like something else that you can provide later on. And it's a little bit of research mm -hmm. that you can do for later on. Just start with cupcakes. What happens if later on you do crepes? Or what happens if later on you do some other kind of product that is also gluten-free, that is part of your bakery and is also part of what you're going to do. So when you create these, um, these ideas, these uh, strategies on what are you going to sell with the first product is very easy to, to create and then you just uh, design it then you go to the second product that is on top of the first same thing with the cup uh, with the cupcakes of the baker what else can you sell maybe it's um, I don't cookies. Know, cookies 
Oh, okay. Oh, I like plant. Plant. It's, it's, it's completely different, but it's also a product, right? It's gluten free, but it has dairy. Maybe you can do a plant with no, uh, non dairy. Mm -hmm. So there's something different. And what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say is you're going to ha start with three products. Those three products are going to give you about 10 to 15 um, uh, posts or content, uh, related content about those specific products, which you can make it spread out. Uh, spread out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is more important to have consistency and say, I post every other day or three times a week rather than putting five times a day, which just unless you you are a content creator that that is your business for a small business is very uh, exhausting to do mm -hmm. that because you have a business to run unless you are a content creator and that is your business. That's a different game. Yeah. But if you are a small business, it is better for you to have a very specific messages for your audience that they are going to relate to rather than only post about the subs that you work today. Mm -hmm. So consistency is about like having a clear schedule or mm -hmm. like when I want to yes. post, having a clear message for yes. what I want to say, and of course consistency in your visuals too. Exactly. Like not today I'm green, tomorrow I'm purple, and unless like your, those are the oh, colors yeah. that, that, that um, identify your brand, mm -hmm. but just like her, have like a clear message, not only on in words, but also visual. Visually has to be two ways. One is that it relates to your brand, and the second one that it reflects the emotion that your brand represents. For example, you can be a very serious brand that has nothing to do with the, uh, with the carnival, and you that day you felt like, hey, it's very sunny, let's do carnival today. And you're like, your clients are going to say, wow, what, yeah. what is going on today? That's instant that is this connection. This, like, <laughs> swipe left. Yeah. Absolutely. So <laughs> you, you, you don't want to do that. You can play with the colors and tone it down to match your brand. And that is, I think, is also a thing that the small businesses um, uh, get lost on the visuals because you can spend mm -hmm. hours on, on trying to do visuals instead of your business. It is okay. And my advice is always um, delegate what you can do. Mm -hmm. what you can't do that takes a lot of time mm -hmm. and focus on your expertise because that will help your business grow yeah and and that is really difficult for us as small business owners to mm -hmm. understand because we want to do it all or, like i can do it all i can do it you all know? or because we have a bootstrap budget uh -huh. so, like how can i do all these if um if they told me social media is free, well, yes, either you, either you have time to do it by yourself or you put money. There's no other way to grow. Either it's sweat capital or capital capital, mm -hmm. right? There's no other way. Mm -hmm. So you just have to get that balance of what, when is the moment that you have to hire somebody and that's what Baker Ripley is very good at doing these sales. Uh, that's basically like, like you have to pick what bottles mm -hmm. you want to fight. Like, yeah. You, if you want to focus on growing your business, like you better start finding those like um, stakeholders that can, can help you, that can uh, help you grow, and that you find the same like that they connect with your mission and mm -hmm. your vision uh, to get your brand where you want it, where you wanted it to be. Alu, do we have questions? Like copyrights? Copyright. Uh, from SCORE, you can send us and um, in SCORE.org, we you find uh, a book says find a mentor and you put copyright brand copywriting and they will pair you with a mentor who is uh, which is expert in copywriting. We will advise you uh, and point point you into the right direction. Of who who are the lawyers who are very very uh, used to do or very experts on copywriting. Okay, 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 good. So now time to talk about 
the problems that actually our business owners have okay, when good. creating Should. content, when creating okay. messages. So what are those mistakes that you see in your everyday life working with small business owners? Well, I can start with websites. On your website, they, they are beautiful websites that have no message. That means that they have beautiful visuals, they have great templates, but when you read it, you're like, you I, don't know, I don't know what yeah. are you selling. I don't know if you are selling uh, vacations because you love the picture and you are <laughs> selling uh, education services and like, I don't understand. And this is a, a, a true case from one of our score clients was that it was beautiful pictures, but we, we didn't understand what was it. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you have the website, make very sure that the image that goes there relates to the service or product that you are selling mm -hmm. and use that first part that's called the above the fold because in the old days it's a newspaper, it was just the first part. Uh, you need to put your value proposition or your offer and a call to action. Buy, learn, register, sign up, uh, grab, snap, Fly. call me, excuse, mm -hmm. whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Just put it over there. And that is the main in website, that's the first one. Okay. okay. Now on social media is the profile, the same thing. It's filled with emojis. I have no idea what it is, what they're talking about. Uh, You're supposed to understand. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. It's just like happy, happy. You uh, have to connect. Happy, 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 just, the, uh, the I don't words. understand. Okay. <laughs> so and hashtag, 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 emoji, emoji. Thank you, follow, and bye. Like I don't know what you're talking about. No. So you have to do the same thing. What are you selling? Who are you serving? And why should they buy from you? And what is the problem you're solving? So that is the what. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have only 145 characters to do that. So you have to think about it and put it the what, the how, and the why, mm -hmm. and for your link. Mm -hmm. So that is very, uh, very important on the on the social media. And then when you are creating your content or your offers, uh, you want to sell everything to everybody. And you don't going to transform those likes or those clients into a sale because they they don't even care about your product. They, they, were, they were not your audience. And anyway, you are trying to sell them. And you you are targeting women, for example, 25, 65 uh, that have children. Yeah, but they are not my, not all the women, 25, 65 that have children, wants to be an entrepreneur. Not no. everybody who wants to, the 25, 65 who have children, wants to actually start a business from home. They don't care. Maybe they're working moms. They don't need a, a business from home. They are very happy doing their stuff and they, mm -hmm. they don't need anything of this. Contrary to an educator that says, hey, you want me to tell you how to uh, uh, keep your uh, your kids uh, quiet when you are doing your, you're taking a call in the car and your kid like, oh, mom is working mm -hmm. and they know how to do it. Maybe you're, I can help you in those parenting skills. That, that may be a, a thing, right? Okay. So that is something that you have to think about. Who is your target audience? So that is also... Go back, back to back, basics. Back to basics. Target audience, the website, the profile, uh, trying to sell everything to everybody, and also trying to, to compete with price. That is a main... Um, on marketing, we, uh, you either position your, yourself as uh, by price or by benefits. I always recommend my clients to, to be an expert or an authority in what you're doing and not price because price has no loyalty, <laughs> to tell you the truth. It's a number. It, it's just a number and in the end, if I like you, you have great customer service, you actually solve my, solve problem. my problem, you, mm -hmm. your salesperson is not annoying me to death to the moment that, okay, I'm going to hang up on you because really I can't stand you anymore even though it's so inexpensive. Mm -hmm. that I rather pay more for you and your service or your product rather than uh, two cents less. So be like basically be so clear on your benefits, on your message, on the problem that you're solving that the price is not going to be a decision maker. Basically. From my point of view, it shouldn't be because you have to, again, you have to go into your target audience. 
if your if your product is uh, a bracket of I'm going to put uh, up to a hundred dollars for example everybody everybody that is above the hundred dollars they're not going to to look for you because they want something that is perceived or it actually values more than one hundred dollars mm -hmm. if somebody is uh, looking exactly that below those are going to be your clients so you're going to convert faster, you're going to have more sales by targeting exactly the people who are looking for your product at that specific pricing. Mm -hmm. okay. And how do you do that? By research. Right. Don't mm -hmm. skip the research part. It is very important. I know it's tedious, it's hateful. Everybody like, oh my God, I really hate part that from the business plan. And it, everybody just like skip it. Yeah, they, they leave it at the end. They leave it yeah. at the end. Yeah. They go first to everything except the, the research. And oh, they just that should be the first yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. always. Always. Do you have any tips for market research? Market research. Go and knock on the doors. I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, go to Amazon reviews. That's the best intro you go can get. Go to Amazon it. reviews. Go to Quora. Go to Reddit, but you go to go down the rabbit hole. But it's so fun to do that. Go to Facebook <laughs> groups. Uh, talk to friends and family, and uh, and your your clients. Your if you already have clients, go and ask. Uh, especially if you're going to have a new product hey what would you price this for or hey you, 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 you just got this product for me what was so good that you liked it mm -hmm. was it price what was it those uh, authentic conversations give you so much uh, back you can also go to your Google reviews if you are Google in you if you are in Google my business uh, go and look at those because you will see patterns I'm all about patterns <laughs> you will see trends, patterns, yeah. and say, oh, from the 75 people that reviewed me, 25 said that it was, it was about the price, but 50 said it was about the customer service, it, it was because my, my salesperson are amazing, they, uh, because my bakery is superb, because I actually have gluten-free and almond milk cupcakes. Mm -hmm. So maybe those are the things. And that's what you are going to say, oh, that is my differentiator. That's mm -hmm. why I'm so unique and that's why I'm they're referring me. So all your marketing, all your messaging, all your clear message, all, you're going to gain clarity, basically. And then you're going to put it out. So market research means go to the reviews, go to Amazon, go, go to Quora, go out there and ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can even send a, a Google form and you can give a giveaway. A, a, a giveaway, a giveaway. Mm -hmm. Say if you if you answer this little survey of hey, what did you buy my product? What do you like for it? Um, would you refer what me? What flavors? To, what flavor do you, you like? like? Would you refer me? And why would you refer me to a friend? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you finish all these, are three questions. <coughs> Sorry, there are three questions. If you refer me, or if you answer this, you're going to enter a giveaway of a, I'm going to put again the bakeries uh, mm -hmm. of a cupcake. Mm -hmm. or, a, or a big cake, right? Yeah, yeah. totally, totally. So when, um, with this world where we have a lot of experts in social media oh, yeah. and the, and the gurus and everything, mm -hmm. um, we find a lot of people that are scams. Yeah. That uh, they're not really looking into helping you grow other than mm -hmm. taking your money. Yes. So what will you say you should be on the lookout when you're trying to hire a person or a company that will help you with this, but that is not gonna just take your money and just do nothing? Okay, one of the things that I like to do, because there are, there are a lot of scammers that just get this template and you will have this amount of leads and sales at the end, right? Mm -hmm. That is the most, the most common one. You just download this and that's it. Um, small businesses usually are very approachable. Call them, talk to them, and uh, have an interview and say, hey, I really want to see what can you do for me, for example, in marketing, and what can, and if we are a right fit, because not everybody will is, is okay with the, uh, of, of the way we do marketing. There are many um, marketers that are very structured on I do this this way and I will not be flexible. Mm. And if you're a small business and you don't want to make ads, for for example, uh, you don't want to market it that will always have ads, for example. Uh, or maybe uh, 
these are templates and they could not customize to your industry they just put literally you can see that it's the same email for everybody and they just changed mm -hmm. the, the, the name of your yeah. of your of your business and it's exactly the same thing and they will say well that reason is a template yes but even though it's a template you have to do the at research. least the, the first no you have to do yeah. the research and you have to put everything towards your industry and towards your uh, target audience again so that will be one. The second one will be, um, uh, and this is tough because uh, the testimonials can be made. So it's not as, oh, they have great testimonials. Yeah, but there were testimonials for 25 years ago when they started and they were very good. Now they mm -hmm. don't. And um, oh, they don't, they're not even real. Oh, they are not even real. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, my advice is always reach out and do that. If you're going to buy something from the internet, at least look at um, the comments, read the comments, and you will see a lot of them are like, this was a scam, it mm -hmm. was no good. Mm -hmm. You can also go to Trustpilot. Okay. And you can Google them there, Trustpilot, and you can literally say, say for example, XYZ at reviews, and they can put, maybe they have none, Okay, interesting. None doesn't mean that they are bad. It means that they are, maybe they, they are, are so small mm -hmm. they don't even have them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes as a small business, we are so small that we just have like 20, Our local, 30 local network. Network and, network and mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, when... So that this is another word and we could even create uh, do another Facebook Live that we might mm -hmm. do soon about like ads, like paid advertisement. Okay. But just like a quick question, okay. when do you think a small business is ready to do paid advertising? Okay. When you have a clear message. If you don't have a clear message, if you don't have your unique value proposition, if you don't have a, um, uh, at least three products with, that are solving a problem and you have that very clear identified, mm -hmm. is money down the drain. Why? Because you are going to throw a net so wide that all the fishes are going everywhere. Are going to okay, there's not going to go away. And that's, that, that's exactly the that answer basically. that I was looking for. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's basically <laughs> the answer, okay? Yes. If you don't have a clear message, you shouldn't do ads. Because that that's the, the main purpose of what we wanted to do mm -hmm. this today. Because uh, you, you sometimes you you start from the step ahead before getting ready all this so you have to have a clear message mm -hmm. you have to know who you're talking to yes before you go out and pay for advertisement mm -hmm. sometimes we're just like in a rush and we're like okay okay make me an ad and, uh, and i'll give you a hundred dollars or because also the the guru said you you need an app to to actually convert those likes into a client and yeah you will get leads i'm not saying no but believe my download your product download your lead magnet but we'll, uh, then you call them or you send them the next email and they unsubscribe why because mm. they they that they were not your audience or you mm. call them to say hey do you, do you want a, a consultation? Do you want to, to talk about this more? Uh, no, thank you, bye. And they call you, or like they hang up on you. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they were not ready, or they were simply not your audience. Yeah. And, and I know this could be uh, so overwhelming, everything mm -hmm. that we're talking today here, because mm -hmm. uh, that might not be your expertise, We like, as yeah. we, we've been saying, like, your expertise is your part of your service and yes. what you're selling. Uh, but if you need help, if you need guidance on how to start this process, how to uh, create this brand message, how to have a consistent visually in through the messaging uh, brand, we are here to help. Yes. Like we, like our programs are here to help you uh, either work on this or connect you with some someone expert on your industry. So please uh, don't don't just leave this as a Facebook Live and I heard that and I heard that you have to have a message on your brand and that's it and I forget <laughs> about it. No, do something about it. And what you can do if you don't know how to start is look for help 
and and find people that know what to do, know where to start, and can can they can guide you uh, through through the process and and through different tools. Because even mm -hmm. like there are some tools that can help you even start. Like I don't know if you want to share with them a couple of tools that can help them work on their uh, brand. I think they can, every every small business should start with the uh, with the free resources that each one of the social media platforms offer. Facebook has a Facebook uh, classes, the Instagram has a lot of resources, YouTube has a YouTube Academy, TikTok also has one, HubSpot, I, they also have one. We at SCORE, we in SCORE we have free workshops, we have free webinars, seminars, uh, online on demand in case you can't do that, uh, or that you cannot travel all the way there, or maybe um, they have other kind of recorded uh, seminars. So there's a lot of free content and free resources that you can go out and educate yourself as a business owner on every step of the way from beginning to of a campaign since uh, creating the messaging finding what kind of brand do you have or you want to create all the way to rebranding sometimes it's like i messed up big time so i have clients i have my product and it's it's not what i want to do anymore my business yet but the brand is no longer what it I'm envisioning so mm -hmm. you can have help on that one and it's okay it's okay it's to okay. rebrand yeah. it, mm -hmm. things change the technology change too so we all change mm -hmm. so you can do that right mm -hmm. so we have all these resources that are free and once you educate yourself once you exhaust all those uh, avenues then you can go to Baker Ripley you can go to uh, to score to find a mentor you can hire someone also you can partner or collaborate with uh, other uh, business owners that, that might have this experience the same thing that you did and that's the reason that the power part of networking mm -hmm. and what you maybe another baker experience what you you already have and they are already have a solution that you will learn from them mm -hmm. yeah that, that I think that that's very powerful in a, for example in our classes that's one of the things that always our students like love about the classes mm -hmm. is like they create their own network mm -hmm. with other small business owners that are maybe struggling with the same things that have been um, using different uh, tools that can help uh, also the, their their progress. So when you get to share with somebody else your pains, mm -hmm. it's so relieving to see that somebody <laughs> else is having the same pain that exactly. you do. And, and they're, they're letting you know what the step did they do and say, hey, I did all this, it didn't work, so just careful, mm -hmm. And but I did it differently and that's how I fix it. And maybe it worked for you, maybe not, but at least someone already walked those shoes and they're going to lead you to the right path, mm -hmm. believe me. Every yeah. small business is the way. At least here in, the, in our Scored networks and Baker. I've learned that we're so supporting of each other, of our, our networks and small businesses. Mm -hmm. We're here to support each other. So, yeah. reach totally. out. Yeah. Totally. So, we're here. Baker Ripley's here. Score mm -hmm. is also available for you. Look for help. Uh, don't yeah. struggle on your own. Nope. <laughs> There's no reason to. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're here to help you. Um, where can they find you? And it's very easy. It's gabbyredman.com. Double B. So Alondra will put it in the in the comments, and and you can follow her. You can. She's always sharing tips. She has her podcast. You can yes. in in and always be open to learn and open to hear uh, other experiences and other stories because there's always something to learn from yes. from them. So thank you so thank much, you, everyone, for uh, watching today. Please, if you think somebody could benefit from this information, share yeah. this Facebook Live, share um, all our events, our resources, and everything, because we're here to help you. And uh, you can reach out through Facebook. Uh, you can uh, reach Instagram. out through Instagram content with a purpose with I'm there over there and in LinkedIn as Gabby Rendon and YouTube on content with a purpose and you can just tag them tag me in, in, in any Baker Ripley and I'm over there she will be there me. yes so if you have uh, further questions you can leave them in the comments we're gonna keep um, an eye on the comments uh, this week 
And if you have questions, we will help you or we will uh, have Gabby answer them for you. And bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.